Our Friday nightcap is wrapping up. Jake Ward, Guy Adami, Nancy Giles, and Evan McMorris. Santoro, all right. It was a week. It was a big week. There were winners. There were losers. A lot of people in the news. I want to know who were your MVPs. Jacques, I turn to you. Okay, I don't know how everyone's going to feel about this, but mine is Lena Khan, chair of the FTC. Week. I know she lost some court cases, and she's on the tail end of a long losing streak. She's lost against Meta. She lost this week in this effort to try and block this merger between Microsoft and Activision. But the chair of the FTC is doing something that nobody before her has really she's attempted to do. She is fighting. She is really fighting, and it is so interesting to watch this young person, right, who came up. Through through academia, got famous off a Yale thesis paper, and is going after these big companies. And she said, going into being FTC chair, we're going to go to court and fight. While we're pregnant. Gonna, and we're going to lose a lot. Yeah, yeah. And, then, and she said, we're going to lose. And even when we lose, we're going to reshape the expectations for the industry and the way things go. I would point out all of the people that she choose, she, she is going after are fighting all the, or sorry, are boasting all the time about having failed and gotten better. Fail big is one of the credos of tech. Why doesn't the FTC chair get to fail big? I think that's what she's doing. She's swinging big at the ball right now. She is failing a little bit right now, but she's about to go after OpenAI, the makers of ChatGPT. Interesting to see what happens there. So for me, she's the most interesting person. I think she's she's doing what she promised she would do coming into the office. Out of the box choice, and I'm here for that. Okay, all right, thank you. Evan? So, you know, Stephanie, I always try to bring similar you stories. Similar to Lena, similar who yours? A little different. Uh, uh, Mara Siegler from Page Six. I always Do you try know to... who he's chosen? Do you realize how exciting this is about to get? <laughs> I, am about to I will tell you, it's exciting. Okay. This is just an important segment for me because I try to bring you the stories of reporters who are in on the front lines, going into danger, putting themselves at risk. She to, was to keep all of us those informed. things. And Mara went to a fancy dinner uh, up on the Upper East Side this week to uh, that was there to uh, donors for RFK Jr.'s presidential campaign. And she wrote this incredible story about what it was like to be at this dinner. There were these two old guys. They get up. They start fighting with each other about climate change. You know, one guy sort of believes the science. One guy kind of doesn't. Kind of common for an RFK situation. Some science doubting is pretty normal and around then? those. And then? And to win the argument, one of the guys farted loudly and then yes, yelled, farted. I'm farting while he did it. Yes. National he said the flatulence helped him win the argument. This That's New right. York Post reporter goes to cover, in all seriousness, right, it may be a fringe candidate, but a political dinner that legit turns into Fartgate. And she's a hero for it. She's a hero for it. She's given us a lesson, which is that if you're going to go to an RFK rally, you might want to wear a mask, not just because people there may not have had their shots, but because yes. you might want to be able to breathe. Correct. And you, then Correct. you might not be able to around people Correct. that you might be around. There you go. So truly amazing reporting by Mara, and I just want to give her a shout out for it. Very few serious reporters get to write the words fart face in a piece. Good on you. Wow, I don't even know you how to follow that. You can't that. trump that. Um, yeah. That's kind of climate change on a personal level. It is. <laughs> it is. Um, my, my MVP is, is old in the sense that it's not a this week story, but he's Reverend Alexander Santora. He's from Hoboken, New Jersey, and um, he makes a point of having a special mass at the end of Pride Month talking about LGBTQ people. Wow. And um, every year when he does this, there are people that stand across the street and protest. He gets hundreds of pieces of hate mail, people telling him he's going to go to hell, he should be defrocked, everything. But he's made a point of going and talking to these people. And I just want to read a little part I of love, this. Wait, he's talking to the he haters. He talks to the I haters, directly to this. the haters. He says, talking has to be a two-way street. Next year, having saved hundreds of hateful emails over the years, I will invite perhaps a dozen people who have objected to our Pride Mass to come to Hoboken before the 2024 Pride Mass so we can talk face to face and try to get at the heart of their hate and perhaps even heard. He says it might be fruitless, but the only way to move forward for any of us is to lay out concerns and see if there are ways to find common ground. I love that so I, much. I have to thank my friend Mary C. from Weehawken to tell me about this. And it's a local story that's in the Jersey Journal, so shout out to local journalists and local newspapers. Shout out to the Garden as well. State. I know, Let's just have that Garden moment. State. There power. you go. Yeah. I absolutely love something? it. Yes. More than farting, love Trump's <laughs> off. Love Trump's off. What am I supposed to do after that? <laughs> you beat him. Well, you definitively okay. Don't did. do that. That's All right, right, I'm asking. right. Very close. Be very quiet. All right, guy, yeah. you have the chance yeah. to win this game. I was going to say, hopefully, flatulence comes in a distant last. But you know, you're in your tennis whites. Not that I watch Wimbledon, although I think most Why people not? have it on. It's I'm. Because you like I'd to rather get baseball? hit by a tennis racket than play tennis. But I'm sort Why? of of that mindset. You like pickleball? Because I'm somewhat Neanderthal. Everybody somewhat? loves pickleball. 
I love I what you did there. I 100% love pickleball. Let me be clear. But I watched this week, and in losing, somebody was a winner, and it's Christopher Eubanks. Mm -hmm. Extraordinary. Went to the quarterfinals. I think he went five sets with Daniel Med, but he had him beat. I think he was up two sets to one, lost in the fifth set. But he was such a gracious guy in victory and extraordinarily gracious in defeat. And I think he captured the imaginations of a lot of people. So a lot of disenchanted people out there that think they're just a bunch of jerks out there. This guy gets it. I love that. I that is absolutely awesome. Thank Those are great MVPs across the board. My final thought for the week, between Taylor Swift's concert tour actually boosting the U.S. economy to Beyonce's tour hitting the U.S., and the Barbie movie's world domination plan well underway, juxtapose that with the possible cage match between Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg. With all of that, we can now officially say 2023 is a hot girl summer.